Okay, welcome guys. Welcome to this technical trading session uh, where the focus is on how to trade in volatile markets. I'm firstly going to go through a presentation I've put together in about uh, in regards to using technical indicators and technical analysis in very volatile markets and how you should go about it. But one of the key questions I've received uh, in the last couple of days is, what are the best trading strategies to use, especially in these current market conditions? And what are the conditions at this current moment? Volatile. Right? So how do I go about trading volatile market conditions? This is a live session. So if you have any questions, guys, please put it in the chat room. So if you have questions, put it into the chat room and I'll answer it as and when. Well, what is volatility, first of all? Let's have a, a, a detailed understanding of what is volatility. So to make money in the financial markets, there must be price movement. That's a given. Uh, but fortunately, price movement is a constant in the markets. And one key factor is how rapidly prices are moving. Yep. So the speed or degree of change of, in prices, whatever the direction, whether it's to the upside or to the downside, is called volatility. The good news is that as volatility increases, the potential to make more money also increases. The flip side of that is that higher volatility also means greater risk. So therefore, when volatility spikes, it may be possible to generate an above average profit, but you can also run into trouble where you risk the risk of losing a large amount of capital is also possible in a very relatively short period of time. Now, just recently, I've had two traders that I've spoken to or seen their review or their feedback in our uh, direct message chat. One had a fantastic update, the other did not. The other, due to the volatility uh, in the last couple of days, especially on the Monday, they had taken a larger loss than had anticipated. Oh, wrong way. Okay, so how do we go? How, what's the steps forward? What do we need to do? Well, generally, there are sort of two factors set objectives and defend better. Right? These are your sort of two goals when dealing with high amounts. How about high amounts of volatility? So you should be able to recognize when markets are volatile. That's the first thing. How do I recognize when markets are volatile? Well, let's think about it, right? What do you think you could use, whether it's an indicator, uh, or it's when you do carry out your review process in regards to recognizing volatile periods in the market? How do you recognize volatility? That is a question, guys. I want, to I want participation. Keep those answers coming through. Great job, guys. Great job. Um, okay, fantastic. So a spike in the VIX, okay, a spike in the volatility index is certainly one way of going about it. Let me see if I've got the drawing tool open. Just give me a moment. Draw that. Okay, so the VIX certainly is one indicator that you can use uh, in regards to defining whether, the, whether there's a much more volatile period than previously. When it comes to the VIX, all you're looking for is the difference compared to previous, right? The VIX, what is the, what is the VIX rate in comparison to the yesterday's rate, right? So you're looking at the difference between the current VIX uh, level in comparison to the prior few trading sessions level, okay? Another option is, of course, I'm not sure, uh, someone's mentioned price movement, but price range, percentage change, percentage change, right? It's a percentage change in assets, right? If a percentage change of asset is higher than normal, you will see that reflected in asset prices. We all know if we see a 7 8% movement in Bitcoin, we know it's, there's a lot of volatility involved, right? If you see a 3% move in the S&P 500, you know it's a, it's a volatile trading session, right? So percentage change can be reviewed. Um, so we've got VIX, we've got percentage change, 
we've also mentioned candlesticks, right? Like candles. Candlesticks is also extremely important as well because the larger the body of the candle, or when you have a large body candle and large wicks involved, you know there's a lot of price action, a lot of volume that's come through to cause such a large candle formation. Yep. So generally, those would be the three indicators or three ways of reviewing whether uh, you can recognize recognizing volatile market conditions. Okay, to recognize volatile market conditions, you can look at the volatility index, percentage change of asset prices, or the candle formation. Those are the three ways to review that. Okay, so moving on. Another sort of um, key part to trading volatility is to reduce your exposure and or your risk, okay, to achieve the same level of profit. As we've already established the definition of volatility, we know that there's going to be a great amount of movement, therefore they could lead to large profits. But you don't always want the larger profits. Isn't it better to have the equal amount of profits but, the, but to lower your risk instead, right? So where you had originally, let's just do sort of, um, where initially you was taking, uh, you was looking at two to ones, right? Looking for two to ones to be achieved in your trades, uh, two to ones, and you're risking, say if you're risking $50, then you're achieving $100, okay? So you're achieving $100. What you might find is in a volatile market condition where markets may be starting at this point over here, might do this and then slowly go up bounce, right? and to your target. What you want to also consider is that for the same trade, for the same trade, you could reduce your um, your risk. You could reduce your risk, say to twenty five dollars, and potentially even increase your take profit level. Increase your take profit level. Yep, where a greater movement. If this is a four to one trade. And you're achieving the same level. So for the same profit, the same $100 profit here, right? I'm only risking now $25 to achieve this because I'm looking for a four to one reward to risk ratio for the same setup. But the volatility will do something like that. You'll see you know, a burst, an explosive move occurring in a shorter period of time in comparison to standard market action, okay? Just regular market action. So yes. Uh, reduce your exposure, whether it's in lot size or the percentage you risk, as in this dollar term, right, to achieve the same level of uh, profit. This, this does mean you need to increase your RRR, okay? So reward to risk ratio is, is what allows you to achieve uh, uh, the same amount of gain with a low amount of risk, okay? And also, uh, coming back over, let's just clear that also. Now, another key factor is to cut losses quickly, right? So cut losses quickly. Because in a volatile market condition, things change uh, instantly. Things will change in a fast orientated manner. Where well, you might see markets sort of eating, some news comes in, you see a large burst of a movement occurring, and then all of a sudden, you know, markets will meet a significant level of resistance, uh, some news factor also sort of comes into play and markets start to sort of you know, decline. You see a sharp decline sort of tracing back and then it consolidates for some time period. Yeah. Last thing you do is really sort of, you know, enter somewhere around here. You made that amount at some point, but then you allow the market to pull all the way back down to pretty much where you started off or with a little bit of profit over here and just hold on to the position, hoping it recovers, okay? I actually have an example of that from uh, the most recent session. Yep, so what you wanna do is instead of that, you might wanna, if you're on the current sort of one hour time frame, for example, or 30 minute time frame, you wanna switch down to a lower time frame. Let's say for this example, we go down to a 15 minute time frame. And within the 15 minute time frame, this upward movement would have some uh, higher highs and higher lows in this. Right, and you apply your trend line and you want to sort of trail your stop loss a little bit more aggressively. Right, and as soon as it um, starts to go against you, then for sure, um, you want to you know look to uh, take profits as soon as possible. Actually, I think I've just answered this bit here, right? So I think I've got ahead of myself to defend profitable trades. Okay, so this is what I'm referring to in regards to defending profitable trades. Right, this is what I mean by defending profitable trades. 
right? So you have a, a large move that goes in your favor. It doesn't quite get to your TP. There's new news that comes in or a key level of technicals that comes into play. Market starts to pull back. It pulls back far aggressive than normal, and you may end up not giving away the majority of the profit. So you want to lock it in by having good in-trade management. So that answers that part of what we're sort of covering here. Getting ahead of myself, guys. Okay, coming back to the original uh, uh, point, which is cut your losses quickly. I often find that when you're entering the market, and let's just say the market's bidding something like this, sort of 18, you've had your breakout, you entered in this region here, you place your stop loss in this point over here, and the market's been volatile, but you know, it's got volatile in your favor, and then all of a sudden it's back in your sort of area of loss. Okay, so now you're losing that position. And the market either stands still in this region, pulls back a little bit, then moves a little bit lower. And you're just holding on to a position where, you know, it doesn't make sense to be in this position because you're looking to take advantage of the volatility in this asset, right? You're taking advantage of the directional play because of the most recent news or technical, whatever it might be, is leading to a volatile move to occur. But it's now sort of pulled back. It's now quieting down. It's not as aggressive as previous. And it's in the losses, it's in the losses. You might want to now, instead of saying, I'll just hold on and hope it returns, whatever it might be, you might say, hang on, you know, the market's still volatility. The VIX is up and it's like at 30. Right? There is opportunity somewhere else. There is going to be opportunity somewhere else. So let's cut this position, right? take profit wherever, uh, close the position where, wherever, take on that loss, half the amount of loss. If it's a $50 loss, taking the $25 loss. Right, instead of a $50 loss. And let me deploy that capital somewhere else. Let me find where there is a price action that is moving in one direction. Right? That's what you want to look for. So look to cut losses quickly because you're not always going to be spot on in regards to trading the right asset during these periods of volatility. Yeah. And also, um, let me clear screen. And have wider stop losses, have wider stop losses. Yeah. So in times of volatility, there could be larger pullbacks occurring. Yeah. So where you see a market that's moving at a 45 degree angle, uh, it's moving so like this, and it's going like that, it's pulling back. You're not seeing sharp pulls, pullbacks, right? You're not seeing sharp corrections. It's moving in a nice gradient of a trend, right? But in a volatile market condition, you might see uh, markets move in a much more erratic manner. So instead of moving in line with this, once you have price action moving, where it's a much steeper gradient here. So it's a bouncing off here, bouncing off. And then all of a sudden, it also has a much larger sharp correction before you have the next move higher, before you have that next move higher, right? And that's why you don't want to play, place far too tight stop losses. You might want to be aggressive with your in-trade management once you're in the trade it's moving in your favor and you're, and you're making money, you're, you're profitable. But initially, when you enter the trade, the last thing you want to do is you want to take that breakout, right? And enter with a stop loss there. And the next move and just wax you out of the position and then goes in your favor. Remember, you're trading volatility. There's going to be Lots of buyers and sellers looking to sort of, you know, take advantage of that volatility, right? So maybe consider having wider stop losses, not just around or below or above a technical level, not staying away from level. Maybe you apply a bit more due diligence and give it a bit more room. If it does pull back, breaks, up, you know, breaks, breaches the private uh, prior low, that's okay. That's fine. It might just recover, right? So... These are all sort of the key points that I would stress for you to test. Not all of them are going to go hand in hand with the way you see the markets, where you trade the markets, especially in volatile conditions, all based around the strategy that you have at this current moment. But you know, having some of these points to consider as part of your system when you're trading volatile markets is very important. So we'll just go over this quickly again before addressing some of the, the questions here. Yep. So knowing how to recognize a volatile market. You may look at the VIX percentage uh, uh, change or the candlestick formation itself. In regards to reducing exposure and risk to achieve the same level of profit, that, that means that you increase your reward to risk ratio, you reduce your percentage risk to achieve uh, uh, the equal amount of take profit or profit level. When uh, the markets 
don't go as you expected on the sort of, you know, uh, in that volatile condition. Instead, it pulls back into your stop loss region uh, and you're at a loss and you're just, and it's just muted. It just moves sideways, not doing much, right? It's, it may be far better for you to cut the position where it is and look for opportunity where there is uh, in that volatile condition. So cut losses quickly, allocate that, uh, uh, those, that risk where you see there is movement occurring. Defend, look to defend your profitable trades. I often find many individuals let those trades run and they let them pull all the way back to break even or even into a potential loss with an unrealistic target. Defend your profitable trades by applying in-trade management through technical reasons, looking at swing highs, swing lows, looking at um, um, parabolic SAR, looking at trend lines, looking at moving averages. There's many indicators that you can use to uh, ways of uh, defending your profitable trades by carrying out in-trade management. And then, of course, have a wider stop loss. Okay, just these are for the individuals that trade with a five pip, 10 pip, 15 pip stop loss, right? When you have generally used to trading the very short term, you're trading breakouts or whatever it might be, and you know, you're looking to apply a very tight stop loss in a volatile market condition, allow for some breathing room, give the market a bit of breathing room to do what it's going to do, pull back, test the pile of your house to then go on to sort of go in the direction that you expect it to go. So do apply wider stop losses. Okay, let's, let's review some of the questions being asked. Um, so I'll come back to, so be prepared to close a trade earlier. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come up, there's some examples uh, for certain. Yes, do, do be prepared to uh, close the position earlier. And I've got an example of that I wanna cover with you guys. So you could always start with, RR of say one to four, but then uh, why is, hang on, um, why in the trade you may close it for even less than one to one, would that not be changing the plan? Well, when you're trading volatile market conditions, right? Uh, ideally, when you're setting it to a four to one, that's gotta be with a technical approach, right? We're not just saying, I'm just going to extend it for the sake of extending it, right? You're, you're extending it because you've seen there's a much higher prior level where with the current market theme and this volatile price action that we're seeing at this current moment, it may not test this resistance, it actually may go further and test that level of resistance. So there is a technical aspect to, to do that, right? But at the same time, you are reducing the risk that you're exposed to that trade and you're coming up, if you are following these steps over here, you are defending that profitable trade when it goes in your favor and it gets that first resistance, for example, right? You may look to sort of, you know, apply an in-trade management approach where you're locking in some of that profits already or you're back to break even. But you still have the upside of if the volatility continues, it will go on to test the, the, the key level that you've outlined as well. Um, I wouldn't say that's changing your trade plan. It's more of, you know, uh, adjusting to conditions, market conditions. What you're doing is looking to adjust your TP or entry or stop losses all based on current market conditions. Do you suggest having a profit margin in mind and closing the trade uh, once it has hit that number regardless of what happens after? I think that is helpful. I think um, it, is, it is helpful to think in monetary terms, right? So it's, it's let, let's go through an example, right? So if, let me just clear some of this. So let's assume uh, we've, markets consolidated, it's broke out, we've got a TP in this region here because that was sort of, you know, a prior level of resistance, okay? Uh, and we put a stop loss in this region here. Uh, we had a sort of price action range uh, and then we've taken an entry over here. Let's just say this is a, could say uh, a four to one, four to one in regards to reward to risk ratio, right? So from that entry down to this point, let's say four to one reward to risk ratio. Market goes in my favor. Okay, so market goes in my favor. At this point, you know, I'm I'm on the profitable side, remember? So as you know, as market goes in my favor, it pulls up and then it pulls back and then it goes and makes a new high. We're around this point of the head, right? We're around this point of the head. So this point is where couple of things I'll think about. The first thing, as you mentioned, right? Think in monetary terms, think in sort of the, the profits there. Right now, what have I locked in? What have I locked in? So if my if this is a four to one trade 
And let's just say I'm risking $100 here. And my TP is $400. Right? So every so often, let's just do it sort of somewhere around this point. Yeah. So it's a hundred, hundred there, there, and there. So that's one, two, three, and that's 400. So at this point here, let's just say I'm close enough to that 200 mark. Okay. So I'm up 200 on the trade so far. Right. So what is your downside, guys? What is, so my upside is 200. What was my downside? My upside is 200. What is my downside? It's a question, guys. What is my downside? No, as in, what is my loss, guys? What is my loss? So if I'm looking to achieve 200, what is my potential loss? I've not moved the stop loss, guys. So I've not moved the stop loss. So I'm just having a slight copy break there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, great answers, great answers. Okay, so this is this is a very pivotal point here now, right? Even though I'm risking a hundred dollars, right, and I'm looking to achieve one hundred dollars, right? So I'm looking to achieve $400, sorry, I'm, and I'm losing, my potential loss is $100. On entry, we were at zero, right? So on entry, we were at zero, yeah. And from entry to my stop loss, yeah, I'm potentially losing $100. But we're not at entry level, we're not at the entry level, right? We're not at this level now, no longer, right? We're not at this level now, right? Where we are is here. Right. So we need to now think that, okay, let's assume this is a 200. Yeah, so I'm up 200 now. So from where market price is, what is ever, what, this is what is on the table right now. This is what I can close my position and take home now. Right. So I'm up 200. My potential loss is not, not 100. It is 100 plus the 200 what the market was prepared to give me. So therefore, it is 300, right? So I'm willing to give away 300 to achieve, what am I looking to achieve here? What am I looking to achieve, guys? What is my upside? What is my upside? 200, exactly. See, that's when, exactly, when you start thinking in monetary terms, then you think, oh, that doesn't make sense. I'm not risking uh, at, at this current market price. My downside is 300, my upside is 200, right? Exactly, the reward to risk ratio is not great, right? That means, what should I do? Move my stop loss. We move the stop loss, let's just say we move it to just above break even. Yep, stop loss two, yep. Let's just say that's a, I don't know, $50, right? So my worst case scenario is that I walk away with $50. Right now the market's moving to give me $200. And my upside is for another two hundred dollars. Yeah. So this is what you need to contemplate as you progress through the trade, right? The first thing you want to consider is the monetary term, right? The monetary value, right? The the RRR, right? So you don't even need to look at the monetary value. You can just look at the reward to risk ratio, right? So from this point, this current marketplace, uh, marketplace, market point, right? Market price. You know, it is three. Right, and it's two up there. Yeah, so there's two to gain, right, and there's three to lose there. Right, so that's not that's not great odds. That's not sort of you know in my favor in regards to reward to risk ratio. Right. So yeah, my reward is two, and then my risk is three. That ain't great. Okay. So therefore, we want to trail our stop loss. What do I need to consider? A technical reason. TAs. I look at TAs as a way of moving. The stop loss right so move the stops there i've now made it a little bit better there right? and the third point is to then consider volatility okay if the market is a slow trending gradual grading inclined sort of market price or mark asset then i might have a much tighter stop loss but if i find that hang on you know we could see a bit more volatility than previously expected right 
then I may not want to be as aggressive with my stop loss. I might want to be a little bit more conservative. Instead of bringing it up to that point, I might just break it to bring it to break even, bring it to break even, right? So you've got to find what the middle ground is, but you're going to always evaluate these three key points, the water risk ratio, first of all, the technicals, and then of course, of course, the volatility in the market. Those are your three key takeaways from when you're position sizing. But try and think of it in monetary terms. You know, just by thinking it, thinking in it, uh, and thinking in monetary terms, it's just going to make perfect sense. But hang on, I'm risking three hundred dollars just to make two hundred dollars. I shouldn't be in this trade longer without moving my stop loss, right? Without trading my stop loss. Simple as that. Right, okay, no questions so far. Okay, let's move on, let's move on.